So we'll call on to our next guest speaker um, for the exhibition reading by Domitila Olivieri. Uh, Dr. Domitila Olivieri is assistant professor at the Department of Media and Culture Studies at Utrecht University, where she has been teaching since two 2007. Her primary areas of interest are at the crossroad between feminist theories, visual studies, contemporary art, semiotics, popular culture, documentary film, and anthropology. Other areas of interest to Olivieri are in an ethnomusicology, anthropology of the senses, technologies of vision, theories on body, and all the subjects in which theories on gender, technologies, and representation can be constructively combined to provide an account of the power dynamics and relation embedded into social and cultural practices. Committed to, to bridging the distance between academic and non-academic milieus, she also collaborated with cultural spaces and in collaborative projects with artists and filmmakers. Hello. Yeah, it's on. Thank you very much uh, for inviting me and for the introduction and for being here on a sunny day, actually. Um, hang on, I need to position my object um, in a way that makes sense. Um, there we go. So I had the beautiful and difficult task uh, of um, when I came, uh, so I came here yesterday and I actually had a conversation with the class of 17 to understand better uh, what I could have contributed to for this event and of course also to uh, see the exhibition. And one of the things that um, they asked me to do were like, well, you can be something like a bridge or a corridor. It's like, okay. Uh, and then I started thinking about this idea and a bridge is like a bridge between something and something else but I wasn't quite sure what was gonna be something of what was discussed and what was something else that my colleague is gonna be talking about later. So I thought, how am I gonna do this? So the reflection of this confusion is, um, or the product of this confusion, is a more or less linear talk that I'm gonna try to give you. I don't, it is not gonna be much like of a teaching moment as much as indeed the reading of the exhibition, so I'm gonna give you a possible reading that is my reading as I have uh, produced it yesterday, crossing that specific space with other bodies, which actually made the experience completely different than if I would have crossed it by myself. Not having that much information beforehand, actually, because I had the leaflet, but I hadn't read it yet. Um, so it, it's, and the, and the construction of that specific embodied moment of yesterday, walking with some of you together, and then uh, last night and this morning, making all these uh, meanings together. Uh, so that's what I'm going to uh, offer you, a reading. Um, I should make one point uh, that indeed the theme of today and as it was introduced also of the next event they organized has to do with gender identities and bodies. So one of the uh, things I should say probably is that I teach uh, in a gender studies program so and I'm a gender studies scholar if you wish. But I'm not gonna be talking about gender in the sense of like men and women, masculinity and femininities or that kind of thing. But uh, my viewing, my experience of the exhibition is informed by let's say gender theory. Gender theory, post-colonial theory, critical theory, all these issues that have to do with power, with bodies, with the ways that our relation with uh, ourselves, with the space, with our society, with each other are always informed by uh, let's say cultural techniques but also about power relation. So I'm actually going to bring in, possibly towards the end of uh, these uh, minutes that we have together, actually the political, um, if I can. Uh, that is this how, uh, through the lens of gender studies, as a lens rather than as, as, a as a subject matter, we can see how the experience of this exhibition or let's say the subject matter or the meanings I created out of this exhibition have to do with specific relation between bodies, each other, society, and maybe power. So, we start with the corridor. Um, okay, so this, I should say, I actually don't know the name of the photographer, but most of these, almost all the pictures, I'm, the photos I'm using are the official picture uh, of the exhibition, other than one that I took this morning on my sofa. Um, so I was like, oh, let's start with corridors. Let's see if I can bring further this idea of the corridor. And then I was like, well, is this a corridor? I, it's the closest thing to a corridor. And I thought, can I actually do that? As we already see, there are doors, entrances, or exits, or windows, or, or 
other kind of windows. So I thought this metaphor of the corridor, I really can't uh, keep it up. So I thought, okay, what else am I gonna use as my metaphor here? And then I thought, well, it, to me it felt like an unraveling of a red thread through a very multiple, very complex, as it's been said, kind of exhibition. So the exhibition being complex, the, let's say, assignment that I had being complicated, I was like, how I'm gonna do this? So in my mind, I was like, I'm gonna unravel like a red thread, like a kind of uh, tortillas in the maze with the minotaur. You have this red thread, you try to make sense of it. It's one of the possible ways to actually get out of it alive. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> So I tried to make it in a kind of scheme. So I'm gonna give you basically uh, some hints of concepts. I'm gonna use some uh, theories, if you wish, or some scholars, some quotes. Um, what's on the slides hopefully makes sense in connection with what I've been saying. Maybe we'll have a life of its own. If you don't understand everything, that's also fine. What I I'm hoping here is for, uh, let's say, uh, l mm throwing some hints of possible readings. So maybe not all of it will make sense, but hopefully some of it will, because I think as been said in the, in the dialogue just before, I'm not very fond as well of this idea of like assigning one meaning. Well, artists hate that in general, especially when you're drawing in front of you. But in general, it's also, so let's say, a, a, a political reading to not uh, assign one single meaning to every single sign that you see. Uh, so it's, uh, some of the concept I'm throwing at you, and I decided to divide this uh, talk, the next, whatever, 15, 20 minutes, in three parts, encounters, the I and the I, and as maybe some of you know, this I and I, I slash I, is kind of looks cool because, you know, they sound the same, but they actually mean something that I hope to bring together, right? This idea of seeing, framing, uh, looking, and I as in uh, construction of identity of subject position, uh, and some of the things have already been said. Encounters was basically, is basically my entry point, and I'm actually glad that this idea of encountering and being together has been brought up already. Uh, encounters happened to be a project that I was working on for myself, an academic thing that was called Affective Encounters. So I thought, mm, since I'm talking about, I'm thinking about that, how about I see the experience of crossing the exhibition as an encounter, right? An encounter with other bodies, which I didn't know uh, that I was gonna meet, but I did. Uh, encounters with objects, with sounds, uh, with words, uh, and just with a certain sense of space. So keep this in mind, if, I, if you're completely lost at one point, it's like, oh, she's gonna get somewhere eventually uh, in this kind of scheme. Uh, and I will conclude, hopefully, where I started. You know, sometimes you try to be making a sense of what you say with this idea of making strange, which also I'm glad it came up, and I really didn't know, we didn't uh, choreograph uh, this conversation. The idea of uh, the reenacting that was mentioned, that sometimes um, through certain intervention, especially I think with artistic intervention, this works really well, sometimes it works with films or other kind of artistic practices. Um, things that you were taking for granted, let's say since the cultural technologies or techniques that somehow were natural or you consider them to be automatic, suddenly you become estranged to that and it's like, hang on, what's happening here, right? And that is sort of like what I wish to claim as a very important contribution that this kind of uh, thinking about art can do. So we start with encounters, bunch of quotes. Um, one of the, let's say, mm, my helper in a kind of labyrinth-like, remember the movie from the 80s? Uh, my helper through this maze that was my reading of the exhibition is gonna be actually a scholar that I've been very fond of, that is uh, Trinti Minha. She's a um, professor at Berkeley and she's also a filmmaker and an artist. I'm gonna use some of her quotes throughout because instantaneously, instantaneously when I had the first email to be invited here and they was talking about windows, doors, gaps, uh, insides and outside, I was like, Trim Minha's work does that, and so she's kind of one of my inspirational guides through this red thread through the exhibition. Uh, and um, let's say sneakingly, using one of her quotes from one of her film, as people say here in a good talk, you don't explain everything. So I'm not gonna explain everything. Uh, <laughs> one of the things that to do with encounter and this idea of connecting with objects and spaces is something that you see there, that is idea that Trimina talks about, and many others actually, this idea of working with relationships, working with interval. And I just like summarize a lot of stuff in there. This idea that when we think of spaces and windows and the inside that become outside, it's outside that become inside, 
uh, it's a way of working with spaces in between, right? Uh, be be it be between a frame and another frame, or seeing through something that you don't know if it's a glass or if it's uh, a mirror. It's this idea of um, working across spaces, right? Um, and uh, Trimina writes, um, working with intervals means working with relationships, for example, relationship between a text or a film, but also between one voice and others' voices, between oneself and the other, the encounters. Uh, but also, in this space, meanings remain fascinated by what escapes and exceeds them. Right? Uh, and finally, this idea of bodies, the encounters and the working in that space between me and you, that's, and there's a lot of like feminist scholars, these are anthropologists, uh, philosophers, that talk about the encounter is only possible if there is actually a space in between, between you and me, and that's where actually the encounter happens. So, now I'm gonna show you three uh, uh, images uh, from the exhibition, and I want to invite you to uh, think about what is the red thread of these three images. There's one. Those of you who haven't seen the exhibition is going to be a bit tricky, but let's ho keep, keep, keep with me. Two and three. This is the one I took uh, on my sofa this morning, and it's actually a picture of the magazine uh, that was compiled by the artist and it indeed opened by this, uh, let's say, mechanical uh, reading machine at the entrance of the exhibition. It's one of the pages. So what, is th what do you think is the... Co you, you can think, if you really have an intuition, you can also shout it. Uh, what is the relation? Yeah. What do these three images have in? Oh, sorry, wrong way. What is these three images have in common? Anyone? I think in here. What? What? A fold. Nice, beautiful. That's not what I had in mind, but see, perfect. <laughs> That's the beautiful thing of making this connection. Yeah. Also didn't think about that, but great, yes. <laughs> well, my reading of it, and that's why I put them together, but I didn't expect really to uh, necessarily them being meaningful in themselves, is that in all three images, there, there is a hand. There is also a hand, but there are also flies, either flies or bees, or butterflies for that matter. So here, uh, this uh, green and red and white uh, see-through in between panel, yeah, there is an end. But on it, there are, uh, um, I think there are flies, this one. Then we see butterflies on the windows there. <laughs> then here, you see, what, where is the fly? There is actually a fly. It's sort of on the glass that is this, uh, is it uh, a mirror, is it a glass kind of thing? In the middle, you think it's a spot of the lens, but actually <laughs> it's a fly. And that's what I was paying attention yesterday when I was talking to, to them, and I was like, that was gave me a sense of actually whether I was looking to what extent at the mirroring, at the mirror surface or at uh, see-through. And I thought that the fly, so I thought, oh, that's kind of cool, that the fly or these flying animals can be one of the way of reading through the exhibition. Also because I was talking to some of you, and we were also reflecting and we were like going on and on about stuff, and one of them was how uh, butterflies or bees or flies use also in traditional, uh, traditional uh, art uh, painting, for example, to give this sense of something that goes outside of the frame, beyond the frame, right? So I thought, okay, let's pretend that this little uh, fly guided me through the exhibition. The fly is actually a fake fly, just so to set the table. <laughs> and, and here, of course, again, this is not that my house is full of flies and bees. These are on the actual magazine. So, what was the eye that was traversing this exhibition? Well, I thought, of course, there is the eye of the machines, the eyes of the camera, as, as I'm not going to go in that direction. There will be another very beautiful reading of the exhibition in terms of technology and, and the camera eyes, uh, camera eyes as a way of, of seeing. But I was more interested in the other aspects, also because I you know, was invited to make the connection with bodies, identities, and all of that. So I was like, let's go in a, let's say, uh, non technical machine device kind of direction. So there is um, eyes of flying things, and there is also the eyes, of course, of the viewer. And one of the things that I think is crucial, and I think it's part of uh, the artist's work already in other uh, contexts, but also very much in this, is this idea of framing, right? 
study of cutting and framing, things make sense in the exhibition exactly because there is a constant negotiation of who is looking at whom, am I being looked at, am I looking? There are, as was said before, not so much that many uh, human or anthropomorphic bodies other than the ones that is yourself across in the exhibition were eventually those filmed and then presented in the actual um, uh, screens within the exhibition itself. Uh, so this all reflection on who is looking at whom and uh, why am I being looked at and who am I being looked at for, of course, triggered this whole long tradition of visual studies, um, uh, arts critical approaches and gender studies as well, of this whole idea of the relation between the eye, seeing, vision and power. So this constant, wait, I'm really bad at standing still, hang on. Um, so uh, these are two quotes. One is Merleau-Ponty, and interestingly, we were talking about phenomenology early on, and he writes, it's at the same time true that the word is what we see and that nonetheless we must learn to see it. So this is a question that is one of the many questions we might be asking ourselves in the moment we are crossing the exhibition. What am I seeing? Who is seeing me? And what would they think if they see me? And is there someone in the other room who is seeing me being seen, so forth, in, in a chain of being seen? And uh, Donna Haraway is a very well-known uh, feminist philosopher, among other things, and she makes this whole connection that you can read there, in which basically she's connecting this idea of a disembodied eye, you know, as a god eye, as connected with uh, claims of objectivity and how she puts it, this multinationalist, postmodernist culture that uh, see the eye as something that is disembodied, objective that sees. And instead they claim, and I think it's a claim that we can make through the exhibition and in relation with questions of bodies and identities and so forth, to sort of rethink or reclaim for an embodied eye, the eye that sees, that as a specific body, in a specific location, in relation with other objects, things, spaces, right? So in the exhibition there is no embodied eye other than the one that is actually the person, myself, crossing it, but I think we can get to that kind of... Um, question for ourselves in the moment we cross a space that indeed has lots of ways of framing and this idea of framing also what is unexpected, which I'll go to in a second, that is uh, the fact that we are forced uh, or invited to look outside, which very often when we watch exhibition we tend to see about what's in the walls, so you hardly look outside of the window unless you know it's going to be a beautiful view, but here you cannot but look outside and one of the uh, rooms, if you've seen it, is the room where there is all this um, little statues of birds on the sticks and then the windows uh, at times open, the shutter sometimes uh, opens and then of course perfectly timed when that happened yesterday all the birds, the actual birds outside were flapping around, right? So this like which birds am I looking at? The ones inside, the one outside? So again these questions of uh, framing and seeing. So that was one thing. Another one that is connected with power but just quickly, if you know it, you know it, if you know it not, and I think this leads us a little bit more on the question of identity, because I know that um, the interest of the organizers, and it's also the focus on uh, Saturday, uh, it's going to be a little bit more talking about gender and identity, also from, let's say, a more political, can I say that, perspective. So I thought that this is a very famous quote from Foucault, it's talking about the panopticon, if you don't know what it is, don't bother, and he writes, <laughs> visibility is a trap. And I think this is a very interesting kind of um, quote to think about when we think about this idea of who gets to, who is made visible, who remains invisible, uh, how do we become visible or become invisible, and especially if we think of a lot of um, social issues and social struggles that have to do with identity, identity politics, reclaiming visibility has been a very strong uh, part of it, right? You want to be made visible if you are part of a quote-unquote minority or somehow reclaiming your identity. And then if Foucault comes uh, years ago, be like, visibility is a trap, because as he uh, expands before that as well, full lighting and the eye of a supervisor captures better than darkness, which ultimately protect. So this idea that darkness can protect can actually be a very complicated issue to deal with when we think about identity, identity politics and visibility. And in this case, the eye of the supervisor, I mean, in the case of the exhibition, of course, can be the camera, can be also the person who's seeing from the other room that you've been filmed via the camera and so forth. So what counts as a supervisor, in a more general sense, society, uh, norms, social structures, blah, blah, blah. Okay, this was the eye. I promise I'll be a bit faster with the other part. 
This is actually the room of the stranger uh, that you've heard before the, the, the various parts. And this, and it was interesting maybe that in the conversation earlier, um, you have multiple meanings to these rooms and maybe it wasn't even the first of the various categories that came up. But when I was in that room, I was like, bam, everything to me made sense. Uh, and so I was like, okay, I'm gonna focus a little bit on this, not so much in the details of the content, but in how I experienced this room. Hello, stranger. And then you see uh, these two uh, mm, mm, installations. One of them, on the other side actually, is the one that is also on the flyer of today's. That's where the title of today's, um, or this week event came up. And this is sort of the setup of the room, right? Hello, stranger. And then you have these four, these are mirrors. You have various quotes uh, and objects. You have this uh, timer. Underneath some of the um, or clock or whatever, underneath some of the mirrors, and then you have uh, an extra panel over there, and and then here was like okay, if I were to give a class uh, on gender studies and feminist theory, I'll be going on and on on Lacan and the mirror and how identity and how identity is, is created, but I thought that's not gonna go there, even though interestingly, in the uh, magazine uh, that we were talking about before, Lacan is actually mentioned. I was like, really, not on purpose, it just came up. So instead, the reading of this space, uh, I'm gonna give it to this idea of the I, and how the I, as in the I of me, myself, and I, and this construction of identity is created through seeing, being seen, and this idea of encounters. And it's a different, <coughs> another slide. Uh, again, with three Mina, she's talking about, well, this is a voiceover in a film, actually, and uh, it's kind of towards the end, and she says, as a voiceover, I look at her becoming me, becoming mine, entering into the only reality of signs where I myself am a sign. What I see here is this idea of, see this is above documentary, long story, this idea of seeing someone else and uh, in the, in, in the moment of me looking at her, she's becoming mine in a sort of moment of appropriation, but into that moment in which she, this other person, this other, this subject, this stranger, becomes a sign, I myself am a sign. I am read myself socially, so to speak. So this relation between encountering the other, the other here would be the concept which was mentioned earlier and uh, interesting was like this room doesn't mean that the stranger is the other, but in my reading, I saw this connection with this idea, the construction of my identity of I has to do with the construction of me as a self, which has to do with this relation with the other. And the relation between self and other is something that's, again, many scholars from post-colonial theories, philosophers, anthropologists, uh, gender studies, you name it, have been dealing with, have been talking about, uh, uh, psychoanalysts as well. Uh, Kristeva's quote speaks of this as well. The other that is not an other only outside, but a way of relating with otherness that we always engage with. We can make sense of who we are, our identity, only in the moment that we encounter others. Maybe it doesn't even have to be humans, even though the tradition come from a very humanistic tradition, let's say, but it's encountering something else, right? Um, and then again, another quote from Trimina in which she brings it all together in this way of looking at gender, femininity, masculinity, inside, outside, and relation between myself and another. So in this last step of the attempt, I was thinking, okay, so in this seeing and being seen, there is an actual construction of subjectivity, we could say, or identity, which would lead us to the last bit which is like, okay, in this crea creation of self and other, how can we make sure, however, that these identities are not uh, um, restricted in some ways? And I think the space of the exhibition does it very well, oopsie, does it very well because in fact you see fragments of yourself through the mirrors, you see fragments of others, it's always a kind of fragmented part of yourself and, and uh, the, 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 the reading of the text itself requires you to move around the space in a certain way, so it's not a room that invites you to sort of come out of it with a sense of wholeness. Now I know who I am, I come out of it with my, my, my selfness uh, intact. Rather, it very much makes you question, and hello stranger, are you talking to me? Am I the stranger here? They invited me, like what kind of uh, invitation is that in crossing that space? So I thought, okay, all of this maybe can lead to this idea of actually unmaking or unfixing of identity, which I know is something that I think the, the, the organizers want to actually go further in next events. So I thought, okay, in a nice place of words, and it's last step from the stranger of the exhibition to making strange, which is something that, again, scholars have talked about, uh, works on it uh, for other projects, 
And then it's gonna come a slide with a lot of quotes, so just bear with me and then I'm conclude. So here I was like, okay, how I bring this all together in my role as a bridge or a corridor or a getting out safe from the maze kind of thing. And this reads top to bottom as we generally read in the Western world. And at the bottom is like a question that I'm not gonna uh, answer. And I thought like this would be a, a the, the follow-up lecture. If, uh, if uh, I or anyone else were to give a lecture, and maybe hopefully it connects with something that my colleague will talk about, I was like, okay, make identity strange again. Sounds like familiar things, um, I know. Uh, and I thought like, well, this will be the question that it brings in the political from idea of identity politics and the idea of becoming visible and how that leads sometimes to commodification uh, to the, let's say, revolution revolutionary potential of thinking of identity and different identities. So to get there, my last step was just explaining in, in, in one minute, this idea of making strange. So I teach and uh, work by the uh, quote at the beginning of this slide, which is, again, Trimina, where she writes, the question is not so much to produce a new image as to provoke, to facilitate, and to solicit a new seeing. So a new way of seeing that can produce something else. That's what I wish to do, well, that I've been doing so far. Um, and then this is like um, other random quotes from different other books. And this idea of making strange or new ways of making sense as a way to basically indeed unsettling stuff that are taken for granted. And I think this might connect with something that will be talked about later. And this idea of cultural, um, cultural technologies uh, in the way that was explained earlier, but in the way that with different terms other scholars have been talking about, in a way things, ways of moving, ways of being, interacting with each other, perceiving each other, experiencing our identity, experiencing others, looking at the world, um, as sort of, they become natural, right? Because we don't see them anymore, we don't uh, experience them anymore, until something like an exhibition, a book, a quote, a talk, makes us think about it. And in the moment that she's like crossing a certain space, say the exhibition space or reading a certain text, then you go like, hang on, I never thought about that. And in that moment of hang on, I never thought about that, like drinking if you're not thirsty and pretending to be, stuff becomes strange. A little bit like when you're walking down the stairs and suddenly you think that you're walking down the stairs and you think, how do I walk down the stairs? And sometimes you trip. I mean, we all have this kind of strange dissociative moments. But if you think of those as a kind of cultural practice of basically making strange, huh? it's a way to denaturalize stuff that we take for granted. It's a way of looking at the world, each other, identities maybe, in a way that then we go like, hang on, it doesn't have to be like this. And then we can ask ourselves, okay, why is it like this? And how can it be otherwise? And so long and so forth. So. I hope to have um, made sense of my, this was my narrative, um, so <laughs> with the hope that I have provided a new seeing or a new f sensing of the exhibition and of our conversation today, I pass the microphone further. Thank you.